March signalled the end of the first quarter of 2024. And unlike the fourth quarter of last year, we saw growth and defensive assets move in opposite directions. Equity markets were lifted by economic data, which suggests a hard landing to the global economy can be avoided. Bonds, however, were impacted by the Federal Reserve's backtracking on the speed of interest rate cuts this year, following inflation remaining above the 2% target of major central banks. Over the quarter, the US economy was supported by positive PMI, which is the Purchasing Managers Index data. The PMI reading is seen as a leading indicator of economic activity, and the latest data sets meant the world's largest economy remains in expansionary territory, helping growth asset returns over this quarter. At the end of March, key central banks unveiled their final interest rate decisions for Q1. Given the inflation numbers so far this year, it was no surprise that the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England all held rates steady in this final meeting. However, for the first time in 17 years, Japan raised its interest rates to 0 to 0.1% from minus 0.1%, marking the end of its policy of negative interest rates, which has been in place since 2016 to stop deflation. Turning to growth assets, equities had a positive start in Q1, driven largely by US stocks hitting historic highs. A significant portion of returns came from the Magnificent Seven technology stocks after they posted earnings growth of 56% during Q4 of 2023. These seven companies now represent a substantial weighting of the major US stock market, but their premium valuation is leading to some caution as we enter Q2. In comparison to US growth assets, UK equities lagged most of their international peers, rising only modestly over the quarter given the poor performance of the UK economy and the bias to value stocks which have underperformed relative to growth stocks so far this year. However, UK equities have a large degree of negativity baked into their valuations, but they are likely to benefit once interest rates start to decline. Turning to factor performance, the momentum, growth and quality factors were the standout performers over Q1. Momentum had the highest return driven by the advancement in artificial intelligence, or AI, whilst quality performed well as stocks with robust cash generation and financial stability traded higher. In comparison, value and small cap were the relative underperformers over the quarter, but posted positive returns given the risk-on views in Q1 and were in fact the best performers through March. Turning to defensive assets, both the 10-year US and UK Treasury yields increased over Q1, as financial markets started to push back the time of interest rate cuts in major economies and were concerned on a resumption of a higher for longer interest rate policy from central banks, particularly the Bank of England. So in summary, it was a good start to the year for growth asset investors, less so for defensive assets. Concerns continue about the concentration of where these large cap growth gains are generated and their underlying valuations. Whilst the US economy's expansion and some broader signs of resilience in the global economy will help growth asset sentiment, maintaining a well-diversified portfolio is more important than ever. And we maintain our view that a broad, balanced portfolio, including bonds, is key to navigating the next quarter for financial markets.